Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna teach you to use the Rescorla-Wagner equation. So the purpose of the Rescorla-Wagner equation is when you are pairing a neutral stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus, such that eventually that neutral stimulus will become a conditioned stimulus. You use this equation to see to what extent the neutral stimulus is eliciting the same response as that initial unconditioned stimulus. Um, so the equation is used per trial, where each trial is a single pairing of the unconditioned stimulus and the neutral stimulus. And then that associative strength gets stronger across trials as those are paired and um, the associative strength becomes stronger. So you've got the equation right here, you can see it. It has delta V, which is the change in associative strength for any given trial. So it, this is the associative strength of the conditioned stimulus. So as it acquires um, a conditioned stimulus status and elicits the response, it's how strong that response is. But the delta V is the change for a specific trial. And the way that you calculate that is by taking the S, which is salience, um, and it is a constant between zero and one and it indicates the salience of the conditioned stimulus. So this is actually estimated after conditioning, uh, which is a little strange, but it's based on kind of that first, um, after the conditioning occurs, you can look at strength across trials. Okay, so once you've got that salience, you're multiplying by the maximum possible associative strength. So that would be the same magnitude as the unconditioned response. If you remember from our discussion earlier in class today, the magnitude of that conditioned response is never gonna be higher than the magnitude of the unconditioned response. So this is the maximum possible associative strength. It's when the um, unconditioned, well, unconditioned stimulus and the now conditioned stimulus would elicit the same response, same magnitude of response. So you're taking that V max and subtracting the V sum, where V sum is the associative strength that is, has already been accrued across conditioned stimuli, um, so across previous trials of conditioning. So to use this equation, like I said, we're gonna use it in specific trials and do one trial at a time. So for each trial, the first step is going to be to solve for delta V. So figure out what the change that is specific to this trial is. The next step is going to be to solve for the new V sum. So at the end of each trial, there will be a new V sum for you to work with in subsequent trials. Um, and then lastly, you're going to graph V so that you can look at the change in associative strength across trials, because that's maybe one of the reasons you might use this equation is to look at change over time in the strength of that response. The one thing I want you to remember, so I've got the equation again here, um, is we're going way back to our like sixth grade math right now. And remember PEMDAS. So this is the order of operations. We always are gonna start with parentheses. So what's inside the parentheses is gonna be done before anything else. Um, I think that's gonna be the only one that'll apply for us. The parentheses make the addition and subtraction of V max minus V sum come before the multiplication of the salience times that um, difference. So that's an important thing to remember as we go through this. So next I'm gonna walk you through in two trials of a Rescorla-Wagner equation. So I have over here, um, under trial one, I have the values of each of the variables that we're looking at. So we have S equals 0 0.6. So remember that's a value between zero and one. Um, v max is 20. So that's equal to the magnitude of the unconditioned response. And then V sum is zero. Um, so if we were to get complex with this, V sum would actually include the associative strength across all um, conditioned stimuli, but 
we're just doing a single, I'm only going to expect you to do at any point, um, a single neutral stimulus that is becoming a conditioned stimulus. So your V-sum in that first trial is always going to be zero um, in when you're only working with one conditioned stimulus. So again, the steps for each trial. The first one is going to be to solve for delta V. So that's what I have shown on this slide right here. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do when we're solving for delta V is we're gonna substitute out those values. So we don't know delta V yet. We can sub out S, so S was 0 0.6. And then we're gonna multiply that in parentheses, V max equals 20 minus the V sum currently is zero. Okay, so we've substituted out the values that are gonna be used in this trial of the equation. The next step for us to do is calculate what is within the parentheses. So 20 minus zero, easy enough, we have 20. So that last step is now going to be to take our 0 0.6, our salience, and multiply by what was in our parentheses, which in this case was 20. Um, in this case, 0 0.6 times 20 is going to be 12. I have myself a little cheat sheet over here. This is one of the reasons that I do it via video, is that I tend to make stupid math mistakes when I do it real time. So excuse me peering at my sheet to make sure that I'm doing it right in my head. So at this point we have delta V, so check on this, delta V equals 12. So we're gonna move on to that next step, which is to solve for V sum. Remember that our V sum at the start of this trial was zero. So when we're calculating what our V sum for the end of this trial is, we're gonna take that previous value, which was zero, and add the delta V, the change that we just calculated. So zero plus 12, our new V sum equals 12. Perfect. So. Now we have, this is the associative strength at the end of our very first pairing of our conditioned and unconditioned stimulus. The very last thing we're gonna do with that for trial one is to graph that V value that we just obtained. So I have it already shown here. Um, to graph things of this nature, you're gonna have trials along the bottom axis x-axis and so that would be the number of times that you've paired those two stimuli together and then on your y-axis we have associative strength so our v value so for this very first trial you can see that it's going to be 12. so we'll move on to our next trial i highlighted this just so it was super obvious but note that in the on the left side are values that V sum has changed. So it has changed to our new V sum value. But our steps are gonna be exactly the same for trial two. So our first step is to solve for delta V. And to do that, I'm gonna substitute out those values. So salience is still gonna be 0 0.6. V max is still going to be 20, but our V sum is now 12. Next, we're going to do what's written in parentheses. So 20 minus 12 is 8. Whoa, got mad at me there. And then 0 0.6 times 8 is 4.8. Perfect. So now we know our delta V for our second trial. Next, we need to calculate our new V sum for the end of that trial. So remember, we're going to add the previous V sum, 
which was 12 at the end of the last trial. So we're always working from the trial we just did. And add our new delta V, which is 4.8, to obtain the V sum for the end of this trial, which is 16.8. And then the very last thing that we're going to do is graph that. So we've got our 16.8 graphed already. Perfect. So that is walking through two trials of the Rescorla Wagner equation. And I'm actually going to sign off and we'll continue to do a few more trials with you helping me with some of the steps along the way. Hope this was helpful.